Welcome everyone to this new video. We're going to discuss uh, questions 1 to 5 of chapter 22, Frontiers of Microeconomics. This is a book of Gregory Monkey's Principles of Economics, 7th edition. So the first question says, each of the following situations involves moral hazard. In each case, identify the principle and the agent and expl explain why there is asymmetric information. How does the action described reduce the problem of moral hazard? When we talk about moral hazard, remember uh, the information that we presented throughout the chapter is something that there is a risk inside the situation because uh, maybe in order to pursue better results, you avoid being correct you avoid being behave just because it's better you will have better results in that way so remember when we talk about asymmetric information this is the um, this is the other case of symmetric information where both parts they have the same quantity of information so this is when one party has more information than the other so remember, the one, the principle, is the one that depends on the behavior of the agent. And the agent doesn't uh, incorporate in some way, or doesn't get or doesn't um, have the utility or the benefits of the principle. So at the end of the day, the agent doesn't care too much about the principal results and he or she pursues their own utility, their own satisfaction, their own profits. So this is the point. So for example, the first case when we have landlords require tenants to pay security deposits. So who are the agent or who is the agent and who is the who is the principal? Naturally, the landlord is the principal, and then the tenants should be the agent. Sorry for the this misspelling, agent and principal. And then, naturally, it's really difficult difficult from landlord identify if the tenant for real will pay the rent. So this is the point of asymmetric information. Because obviously the tenant will say, okay, I will pay for sure, but you don't know that. The unique uh, party that has that information are their own tenants because they really know the economic situations and then the action that they will follow. Because maybe it's not just because of economic situation, it's maybe because they are kind of irresponsible, disorganized and culturally behave in that way. So maybe they will uh, delay in their payments, maybe they will pay less, maybe they will get uh, trouble. So then definitely this should be a problem from to the landlord. So then naturally with deposits this could be kind of a signal because when the, 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 the landlord receives this deposit will guarantee in some way that the tenant uh, will pay because if, if the tenant can pay a deposit plus the rent it's kind of a, a signal otherwise could be that maybe they will just pay the first month and naturally it should be economic deposit economic security in that case maybe some something will happen the second situation is about firms that they compensate top executives with options of uh, to buy company stock at a given price in the future. So then, naturally, the firms are the principal and the top executives are the agent. Again, the firms, they hire top executives. Obviously, they make a process to choose them However, they cannot identify for real if they will exert effort or not. So then, 
a way to include the utility or the profits of the firms inside the effort of the top executive plus the salary should be the stocks, right? In that case represented with options. Then with this option, which is not more than an action that you will uh, get in the future at the determined price, then naturally you will get that you will exert effort to work more because if you work more likely the firm will get more profits and if the firm get more profits likely this firm will get higher prices so then should be better situation because with the price given now and you sell it to a higher price the gap between this option and the real price of the firm this should be a benefit for for the top executives so then naturally that's the problem the problem more hazard in that situation is that the firms they cannot easily uh, monitor top executives behavior the they etc or not effort then Naturally, with this situation, top ex executes, uh, executives, they will have more incentives to exert effort. Third, point C. Car insurance companies offer discounts to customers who install anti-theft devices in their cars. Again, in this case, the insurance companies, they are the principals. And naturally, they can identify the, the behavior of the consumers, the clients, the insurers. Um, then the insured, so they should be uh, the agent, the customers. Then the customers with anti theft uh, devices will have less possibilities to suffer a robbery. And furthermore, we can say that when people acquire this kind of uh, goods, you, you see that they, they have like more precaution uh, on that situation, right? So then, likely because of um, maybe a, a, a situation that they forgot something and they lost the car because they left opened or something like that obviously this is kind of a signal because if you buy an anti-theft devices not just for taking the discount but also because you want to take care of your good this is a, a signal that they those oh, those people they will take more uh, they will take more care about the car, the car at the end of the day. So then the insurance companies uh, can identify if the insurance is possible or not. Or, you know, it's something like uh, in some way like doesn't take care uh, too much about the good. Then second, suppose that the live long and prosper health insurance company charges 5,000 annually for a family insurance policy. The company's president suggests that the company raise the annual price to 6,000 to increase its profits. If the firm followed this suggestion, what economic problem might arise? Would the firm's pool of customers tend to become more or less healthy on average? Would the company's profits necessarily increase? This is a really interesting question that you can uh, take in different angles. So naturally I would say that there are different answers, but let's see if you share our um, answer. So naturally when the price increases, some people will avoid paying the insurance, right? Imagine that you can uh, you can just afford five thousand, and maybe um, you are you are healthy, and you say, okay, I don't care because actually I don't take I don't use that uh, health insurance, so for me uh, it doesn't matter. And then could be the case that maybe you really need it because you are unfortunately an unhealthy person, so you say, okay, I will pay it that so then could be the case but i would like to abort in in different part because maybe the ones that will not pay tend to be the ones that they don't need too much right but actually it will depend on the pool of people that they pay 
that, that insurance. Let's split on two groups. The first group, imagine that we have a group that they are risk averse. What does it mean? It means people that they, uh, they prefer to avoid taking risks. So when they avoid it, they prefer to be insured naturally. So they prefer to pay. It. Now we need to review it inside that group. Who are they? They are healthy or they aren't? Then, if we have naturally more healthy or we have less healthy people inside, inside that group, then the other group, the other situation should be that we have risk taker. A risk taker is a person that prefer to, as the name says, to take risk, right? So if you are healthy enough, you say, okay, I am going to take it, maybe. So then, there should be the case that they're more healthy and they are less healthy. Naturally, when we have more people that they are more healthy and they are risk averse, so they are not going to take too much or we are not going to ha have too much claims, right? So then, and they will pay more. So naturally, the increase of the income or the profits should be guaranteed. If we have more or less healthy people and naturally we pay more, right? Uh, and then the the situation of the of the claims should be the same as before, the income compared with before should be higher. Please apologize because his should be higher because at the end of the day you are going to receive uh, more money and you are going to assume the same claims as before. Then the other situation, risk taker, what do they do? Naturally, they avoid taking uh, taking this claim, this sorry, this insurance. So they are going to avoid paying more. So they are not going to take it, and then the income should be lower. In this situation of less healthy and they are a uh, risk taker, so then again they are going to avoid taking this um, this insurance and the income should be lower or it depends should be kind of ambiguous better because if this one thousand dollars that maybe some people will pay compensate in some way the uh, the less healthy people but let's say at the end of the day that because less healthy people they will uh, they will anyway uh, pay less people to these six thousand dollars the next question says a case study in this chapter describes how a boyfriend can signal his love to a girlfriend by giving an appropriate gift do you think saying I love you can also serve as a signal why or why not well naturally it's really a subtle question I don't know how to answer but just to make some draft I would say that maybe uh, if in a culture is really appreciated this should be a signal right for example just uh, I'm going to take a risk today something maybe extremely subtle in European uh, countries they are not like really uh, love people that they start to say or to to kiss a lot they have like more respect to the space of the other and when you go to this stage maybe um, this really appreciated because someone says I love you is because you feel from your heart right so maybe this should be a signal but maybe if you say all the time as unfortunately here uh, in Latin America, likely, for example, you get some app or something thin there, even you don't know that person. And the first uh, time that you're chatting with that person, maybe you can say even I love you. Obviously, this not to be a signal in some way. So it really depends on the culture and not only the culture of the, the country or, 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 the, or the continent in general, but maybe the situation of the couple as, as well. Then, 
Some AIDS activists believe that the health insurance company should not be allowed to ask applicants if they are infected with the HIV virus that causes AIDS. Would this rule help or hurt those who are HIV positive? Well, the point is like first I want to emphasize that I'm going to roll out all the ethic issues because this is really a hot topic but I'm just going to focus in in economic matters so when uh, the, the point is like naturally HIV positive will have problems because in terms of economic situation we have a problem of asymmetric information when you provide that you are HIV positive you take out this issue and we are we are facing a situation of symmetric information both parts the agent which should be the HIV positive uh, person and the insurance will have the same information okay then they will have problems why because the risk that you need more the health insurance should be higher compared with a healthy person so naturally you need to pay more for a higher price would it help or hurt uh, those who are not HIV positive at the end of the day it will help because the the prime that was charged before was like kind of an average because you don't know if you are positive or not but now that I'm, I, uh, uh, I know that you are not a HIV positive I can charge you a lower price then would it exacerbate or mitigate a product of adverse relation in market for health insurance naturally it mitigates that situation because you avoid asymmetric information then uh, the other situation, do you think it would increase or decrease the number of people without health insurance? Uh, at the end of the day, maybe it will decrease because from some part, uh, HIV positive that they weren't uh, HIV positive that they had before the insurance, they will uh, still get the insurance, naturally they will pay less. But maybe because of the price is higher or for the HIV positive, they will avoid it. So then we need to go deeper in the situation if they are risk takers or they are in the part of risk averse in some way. The last question says, Ken walks into an ice cream parlor and the waiter says, we have vanilla and chocolate today. Then Ken says, I'll take vanilla. Whether, ah, I almost forgot. We also, I'm sorry, we also have a strawberry. Ken answers, in that case, I'll take chocolate. So then what is standard property of decision making is Ken violating? Then we need to reread natural. This is the section of Onaro's impossibility theorem. Then this should be the independence of irrelevant alternatives because obviously strawberry doesn't uh, take part in this situation because at the end of the day I'm just deciding between chocolate and vanilla and then if it's a strawberry what, I sh what should I change if I'm going to take my decision again between vanilla and chocolate then first vanilla is preferred to chocolate then under a third option the strawberry chocolate is preferred to vanilla so naturally it violates the independence of irrelevant alternatives i hope it has helped i know that this is kind of subtle i really appreciate your comments and then see you in our next video bye bye